God bless you, and you may be seated. <clears throat> the desolation of the city was so complete that witnesses found it hard to blame human destructiveness. Large buildings and massive walls were toppled, scattered like toy blocks. Mangled bodies lie about under the sun amid the ruins. A broken man staggers, his face bearing the empty expression of utter devastation. Now and then the pain inside him wells up and breaks forth in uncontrollable sobs. Everything he has known is gone. If you listen carefully to the words of his crushed soul, you will detect that he is a believer who had made his confidence in God known to others. He was a man that was not afraid to tell you whatever God would share with him. And he had been extremely ridiculed for it and even put in prison. A dungeon, they called it. But he, at this point in his life, was clearly disillusioned with God. What has befallen his hometown of Jerusalem has ultimately come from God's hand, and he knew it. But it goes further. This man also believes that God has it in for him personally, that God may possibly be even against him, and that there is no good evidence left on which to hang his hopes for a different future. But then he stopped talking long enough to remember. You may be surprised to know that what I am reading and the man that I am describing to you right now is Jeremiah. But suddenly Jeremiah raised a weapon of truth against the despair of his own personal sadness that felt so much like a a final reality in his life. And after pouring out his anger, his sorrow, his shock, Jeremiah adds this in his letter to his survivors. He says, My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Second Peter described it like this in verse 12 through 15. Wherefore, I will not be negligent, he said, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yes, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. He qualifies and begins his statement by saying, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to cause you to stir up your minds. I have a goal. I have a purpose. And I know you've heard it before, but you're going to hear it again. I've got to somehow remind you. He said, knowing that shortly... I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. My days are numbered. But as long as I have life, he said, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. I have an obligation. I have a duty. I will endeavor, he said, that ye may be able after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Paul was saying, I'm going, uh, Peter was saying, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you over and over again. And it may be redundant, but it's very important that you understand we have an obligation to never forget 
what the Lord has done for us. And he said, I constantly am going to remind you and I will remind you again. I am forever indebted unto the sermons of men like J.T. Pugh and O.R. Foss that just as a new convert constantly would declare sermons over and over again. Doctrine over and over again. We never had a problem singing the same songs, but let a preacher preach a sermon again. But Paul said, regardless of whether it's been one time or ten times or a hundred times, I'm going to bring to your remembrance one more time that you need to know that God has been faithful to us, that God has saved us, that God has been very kind to us. Why do we forget? I would ask you that question this morning. Why do we seem to have very convenient amnesia? Uh, Why are we so quick to not remember how good and faithful the Lord has been to us? He said in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9 and beside this, he said, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. He said you ought to be growing in knowledge, you ought to be growing in faith, you ought to be growing in virtue, you ought to be growing in temperance, you ought to be growing in patience, you ought to be growing in godliness, you ought to be growing in brotherly kindness, You ought to be growing in charity. For if these things be in you and abound, he said, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he hath purged us from our old sins. I am so thankful today that God has allowed every one of us to be in this church. I'm so thankful that the Lord was willing to go to Golgotha's Hill and die for every man, woman, boy, and child in this building today. Aren't you glad that Jesus was willing to come and die for us? He said, if you ever get forgetful, he said, uh, and you ever get blind where you cannot see afar off, And you cannot see the eternity that Jesus has offered to you. He said it's going to be because you have forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. We have been so far removed from the day that we came to the foot of Calvary's cross. And we came broken and we came wounded and we came bound. We came so heavy. But when we came to the altar... That load of heaviness was lifted when we said, Jesus, please forgive us. Wash me and cleanse me and sanctify me. Make me. We didn't have, some of us had no relatives. We had no lineage. We were not first, second, third, or fourth generation Pentecostals. And thank God for all of you that are. But some of us came in this building. We came in as drug addicts. We came in as as prostitutes. We came in here bound. But when we came in here, He offered us life. He offered us hope. He offered us a new life. He offered us forgiveness. He offered us everything. He didn't make us get right. We didn't have to get good. We didn't have to take a course. We didn't have to take a test. We didn't have to prove ourselves to anybody. We came broken. We came wounded. We came afraid and fearful. Not knowing how heaven would respond. We didn't know whether he would say, depart from me. I, I, I don't know you and I don't love you but just the opposite. He treated us as sons and daughters. He gave us an open invitation to have a brand new life. Oh my, I remember what it's like. One of my favorite scriptures preaching on the evangelistic field was the fool so loatheth even the honeycomb. But to every bitter, uh, but every, to, to the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. The fool so loatheth the honeycomb. But we were so hungry 
It didn't matter what it was. Whatever the master put on the table, we were willing to take it because we, we were starving for something. Oh, God forbid that we get so removed, far removed from what it was like to have our sins purged and our sins forgiven that the music has to be just right. It has to be a certain style. Folks, I want to tell you, J.T. Pugh, I watched him for years at conferences with all the new music. He would be the first one up. He couldn't clap on beat, but he clapped. Because he never got so far removed from what Jesus had done for him and did for him that he would not be a worshiper. When the sound is irritating to you, folks, we may not always have the sound right. Some days it'll be too hot. Some days it'll be too cold. But one thing is sure, the grace of God is sufficient. And he's still almighty. And he's still all powerful. And you better not get so full, F-U-L-L, that you're not a worshiper. That everything has to be just right. There was a day when the music was right. When the atmosphere was right. When everything was right. You didn't look around. You were just a drug addict on your way to hell. But you came to an altar. And he washed you. And he forgave you. And he redeemed you. And he gave you something. Some of you. Some of you. The younger people may not not realize what I'm saying, but some did not have a pot or the window. Neither one. You came in here broke. You were so broke you couldn't even pay attention. But you came to church and started living laws and started living for God and started paying your tithes. And suddenly, God turns your whole life around and puts you in a different position in a different place. There are people that have made over a million dollars since you come to God. But you were in a psychiatric ward before you got here. Would somebody help me remember the God of all gods, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace? Shataya Bahaya. Help us, Jesus, to remember. The Word instructs us. To give all diligence lest we find ourselves in a backslidden state. Many of the things that have been forgotten is because they were never seriously learned. Oh, we like to quote it when we're trying to make a compromising stand. But the Bible said I can work out my own salvation. Go ahead and complete it with fear and trembling. With holy reverence unto God. You better be careful that you remember you had absolutely nothing. But God gave you everything. You came in knowing nothing. Some of you were raised in the church. You ought to be out shouting everything in the church. You've never known what it is to taste of alcohol and drugs. You've got a testimony that not only God can save you, God can keep you. That's a testimony. I don't want my baby to know what it is to be strung out on alcohol and cocaine. You don't want your baby. I've told people that are expecting children, the minute your child comes, you're going to see holiness in a different light. You're going to say, preach it, preacher. You're going to say, youth youth department, preach it, youth department. Tell my baby. Help my baby. Show my baby. Tell them purity's all right. Tell them purity is the order of the day. Tell them it's pleasing to God. Tell them you can say no. You can say no. God will cover you. God will help you. God will send you the man and the woman that you need for marriage. I wish somebody, you found a wife here. You found a a, a mate here. You found her at youth camp. You found her. Some of you found her at a singles conference, but you found it in the church. The devil would love to lure you outside of the church, but I'm here to tell you, don't ever forget, the world has nothing for you. Everything is in the church. Everything you need is in the church. It's all in the church. I need the church, and the church needs you. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. He said, wherefore lay apart 
all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We have to receive the engrafted word with meekness. We must not fail to deal with sin in our life when God, through His Word, reveals it to us. Because if you forget to hear this Word, you will find yourself positioned in the land of forgetfulness, where there is no light and where there is no righteousness. And I come to tell you today, but His mercy and His grace is available for anybody who will receive it. How do we remember? In the book of John 14 and 26, he said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you, when the Holy Ghost is operating in us. His words will bring us to remembrance. It will convict us. Every sermon that you've heard, every sermon you've heard more than once, every song that's ever ever been sung, when the power of the Holy Ghost is working in our life and we are walking in the Spirit, it will suddenly bring things to our remembrance. If you cannot remember what God is requiring of you, or the vows that you made. Maybe you don't have enough Holy Ghost. Maybe you need another visit to the altar. Maybe you need more of His power and more of His Spirit so that He can remind you of what He's already told you. And if God, and if the Lord has told you no, don't ask Him again because it will not change. If He said no, then it's no. If He said yes, it's yes. But if you continue to ask Him, Lord, can I? Can I? Can I? What about this and what about that? He like Balaam will will tell you, okay, do whatever you want to do, but you will find leanness in your soul. That's two weeks that the Holy Ghost in a row has given me that word for somebody here today. Whatever the Lord has said, I pray that He will bring it to your remembrance and you will feel it and you will know it and not be afraid of it. God doesn't want you to walk fearful. God wants you to be faithful. And if you will be faithful, you will have nothing to fear. He's going to honor you. He's going to bless you. And if he says no, he's got your best interest at heart. I want whatever the Lord wants for me. Not my will today, but thine be done. Lord, give me ears to hear what the Spirit would say unto me. 1 Corinthians 4 and 17, he said, for this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. And that's why we need sons in the gospel. That's why we need to give this message to sons in the gospel. Because Paul says, I can't be the only voice that people hear. And so he said, I'm going to send my son in the gospel. And I'm going to send him 
for you to hear. He actually rebuked them very sharp, sharply. He said, if you don't receive my son, when I come, I'm coming with a rod. Because he said, I, you've got, we've got to transfer this to sons. And sons have to be willing to take it. And I'm going to send my beloved son who is going to remind you of everything he's heard. And he's not preaching a new sermon. He's preaching the sermon that was given to him. Can I tell you, I don't have to preach a new sermon. J.T. Pugh gave me a sermon. He gave me a message. He lived it in his own life. He showed it by example. He walked to the pulpit and he preached over and over and over again. Our ministry came up under the development of O.R. Foss. He gave me an opportunity. He gave me a platform. He put conviction in my spirit. He put that type of preaching. I remember hearing at his church your first night in hell. I, I remember him preaching on your way to hell. Stop by Calvary. He put that in me. I don't need a new sermon. I don't need a new message. My, my fathers in the gospel have placed things in me and I remember them. I will never forget them. And he said, my son in the gospel is coming and he's going to preach to you my ways. He's going to preach to you things that I have given to him. He's going to preach my words. Well, I'm not preaching another man's words. Paul got his words from Jesus Christ and he transferred it to another generation. Would you hear me today? Somebody needs to shake your mind. You need to shake out of amnesia and remember the gospel that was presented to you. What a privilege what a privilege that God sent this church in its foundation years one of the greatest preachers in Pentecost was in this pulpit and you know it and God sent him to you and you are powerful and you are strong as a result of it I'm in vineyards I didn't plant I'm in a house I didn't build and I remember today that it is the mercy of God. It's the grace of God. You are anointed because somebody's gone before you and given you a message and given you this glorious truth. I, I pray that you never forget the obligation that we have to do something with the truth that has been handed to us. God help us. Jude verse 5 says, I will therefore that you put in remembrance, though you once knew this, you once knew it, but you evidently don't know it any, anymore. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. When they forgot how faithful God had been to them, he said, I want to remind you, that the Lord brought judgment to them because they would not believe. He brought them out of Egypt. He brought them out supernaturally and miraculously, but afterward destroyed them that believe not. Can you imagine that all God wanted them to do was believe and not be afraid? But instead of believing and not being afraid... Evidently, they, they got full, F-U-L-L, -L, and they got satisfied. And they had already be, been warned, when you get full, beware lest you forget. Because fullness and forgetfulness can go hand in hand. There was a day when you were hungry. There was a day when you were in bondage. There was a day when the children of Israel remembered that, but they had forgotten it. That may be why when he came into his own, his own received him not, because they had already forgotten all of the prophecies and all of the words and all of the declarations so that when Jesus finally came, he came into his own, but his own received him not because they were too full and they were too satisfied and they had already made up their mind, we will live in the residence of the land of forgetfulness. We will not, we do not remember. Who? What prophet? What word? What sermon? 
What camp? What youth camp? What? I can't remember. I forgot. But forgetfulness will be no excuse for the faithfulness that God has given to you. In the book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6, he said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. What? You called me to the priesthood, but you've changed your mind? You said you wanted me to be a priest to the people, but now you're telling me no? I want to serve your people. I want to go into the holy place. I want to give manna, receive manna so I can give manna. I want to be used of you. Give me words. He said no. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. The Lord says, if my law is not enough, and my truth is not enough, and my faithfulness is not enough, then I will not only reject you, I will forget your children. What an obligation. Some would say, but we're in the grace dispensation. And we are. But your children deserve a right to this apostolic truth just like you did. God forbid that your children are not raised in this truth. God forbid that your children would not be raised in this truth. God forbid that one day children, your children, are not raised in this truth. God forbid that your children don't have a right to hear the same message, to go to the same camps, to hear the same sermons, to hear the same conviction, to be there when a preacher has fasted seven days or ten days or fifteen days trying to get the mind of God. Everybody has a right to this apostolic heritage. New generation of people that don't have a clue are here today, but you're not them. You're not them. You're them who knows what it's like to be carried out of a tabernacle, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God saturated your entire body. You know what it's like to come home to a mother who was saying, God, whatever it takes, save my baby. Save my baby. Save my baby. Oh, God, help them to love the truth. Help them to live the truth. Help me to present it in a way where they don't rebel. Help me to love them to love you more and greater. And you came home to that environment. And then you came into the presence of the Lord. You went to camps and with your friends. You have locked arms and you have wept and you have shouted. Don't ever forget what God has done for you. Would you raise your hands right now? Don't ever forget what the Lord has given to you. Don't ever forget. I'm, I remember my first youth camp. I, I was in a strange environment. I was scared to death my first time I was exposed to this type of preaching. It literally scared me so bad. I told my drunk mother, get me out of here. My mother was so drunk she couldn't walk. She said, get me out of here. These people are crazy. I went back six weeks later. And, and the sermon was this. The appeal was, if you want a daddy you've never had before, and you want God to become your father, I want you to take giant steps to the altar. And when I came to the altar, I didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. But in Lafayette, Louisiana, when I raised my hands in that church where Brother C. Cooley was the pastor, and I raised my hands, suddenly the power of God hit me. And for 45 minutes, nobody taught me a prayer language. I didn't even know if there was such a thing. But I began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave me the utterance. 
and my first youth camp. A.D. Spears was the speaker. And I remember as a new convert hearing this train-like sound that started in the concession stand. And suddenly, as I looked through those glass doors of the old sanctuary, I saw people literally putting down Cokes and drinks and throwing their hands up. And I heard this sound like a train. I've only been in church for a month. This is all new to me. And I heard it. And when it came into the sanctuary, this section was standing. It was like a a wind that blew over. And like dominoes, they all began to fall. And I remember being on the other side of the platform and I thought... Is it going to get over here? What's going to happen when it, when it gets here? And then suddenly, when I got up, I realized it had gotten there. And I talked in tongues on the floor. I'm talking about of God. I'm talking about a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about a manifestation of God's power. Let us never forget what has brought us to where we're at. We will never be satisfied in other any other environment. God, help me to remember. Let me never ever forget. Never never forget. Lest my daughter doesn't know what Pentecost really is. What, what the next generation, folks, there's a generation of converts that are yet to be born. We want them to know what Pentecost really is. We want them to know what the power of God really is. And when he had given thanks, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four and 25, he break it and said, take heat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper was and is a symbol of remembrance of the blood that he shed. And the body he sacrificed for our redemption. Let us never forget about the blood. Let us never forget about the sacrifice. If there is anything that we need to understand now, I join with the book of Revelation chapter 21 as I hasten to a close. And he said unto me, it is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Anybody that wants life, you can have it. Anyone that needs a refreshing of my spirit, you can have it. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. You mean I can get back up? And get over that that has overcome me? Yes, you can. I can start over today as if I had no past? Yes, you can. Can I start with a new future in God? Will he anoint me again? Can I still preach? Yes. Can I still pray? Yes. Can I still go overseas and be a missionary? Yes. Can I still be involved in the work of God? Yes. Can I recover from my fall? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Or he shall be my daughter. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now let's go back to the church that forgot. 
what it was like to be under those heavy loads of bondage and a whip upon their back and slime and mortar pots that they carried all of those years of slavery. And the Bible said if Moses would not have intervened and appealed to God's mercy and his long suffering, every one of them would have been destroyed. But because he appealed to their mercy and kindness and to his long suffering, he said, Lord, let me remind you today of your mercy. Please, God, remember, remember your mercy. And he said, all right, everybody 20 and above, they'll die. But all the teenagers will be spared. So when you see this first group, according to John, that would go to hell, people from the church will be there. His first church, Israel, that he had brought out across the Red Sea, but they were fearful and unbelieving of the prophetic future. They wanted no part. I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to be in your kingdom. I don't want to teach Sunday school. I don't want to stay pure. I don't want to do this. I want to do something else. I want to be free. I'm fearful. I'm afraid. I'm tormented. I don't think I've got what it takes. But he said the first group would be the fearful and unbelieving. This sermon was born out of a conference call. I was so honored to speak to the evangelists of the United Pentecostal Church and Brother Tom Foster's uh, service that he had. And he has the conference annually. And I was so humbled and honored to be able to address men and women that are giving their entire life sacrificially to, to give this gospel to the world, to the, all of North America. And when I got through Thursday, Brother Foster ran up, took the mic, and said, we need to stay connected, and we need to have a conference call. And Brian Kinsey from Pensacola, Florida, two weeks ago, as only he can, began to walk in the gift of faith and begin to speak to all of the evangelists. Brother Klein then set the conclusion. We started praying, and it's a conference call with over 26 people on it. And he said, does anybody have a word from God? And the Lord had given me a word. I had written it down. He said, my faithfulness to to you as evangelists removes every excuse that you could ever muster to be fearful in my presence. My faithfulness takes away every excuse for you to be afraid. You need not be afraid because I, the Lord, have called you. I, the Lord, have chosen you. I, the Lord, will equip you. I, the Lord, there may be somebody here today that feels like I I just don't know if I can get back on track. Bow your head just a moment. Every head bowed. Every, I don't think, I don't think he could ever put me back together again just don't be fearful and don't be unbelieving because God has sent me to bring you out of the land of forgetfulness into the land of his faithfulness God would remind me to tell you I am the faithful God I am the holy God. I am the righteous God. Look up just a moment. Deuteronomy 7 and 9 said, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. The Lord said, Not only will I go into covenant with you, but I'm going into covenant with your children and with your grandchildren. I'm going into covenant with them. First Kings 8 and 56 said, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses, 
his servant, and I am in the presence of people today that your pastor was led by God to tell you that everything was going to be all right, and today some of you are possessors of miracles because God anointed us to tell you everything was going to be all right, and you believed it, and God has allowed a miracle to be manifested in your presence. He is the only one that should receive any glory and any honor but just as God used Moses he wants to use you I feel a call of God upon somebody right now I feel like God is calling a man and woman trying to shake you to a place of remembrance it's not what you want it's what God wants and you've got to be willing to say Lord not my will but thy will be done I never saw myself like that. I, I can't imagine God using me like that in that capacity. And neither could Moses. Aaron would have never been involved had he just believed the first time. Oh my. The call of God is upon this building today. The call of God is upon a younger generation to get you to remember God's calling. The musicians are coming quickly. God is calling you to remember. 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 Get out of the land of forgetfulness. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth into the clouds. There's not a bar that you can go to that God can't reach you. There's nowhere. Once you've been touched by His majesty, you'll always be a little weird and strange. You won't even be able to get high with them. And they always think something's wrong with you. What are you doing here? Go ahead and go to the bar and drink and forget what God's done. But you'll never be a part of them. You'll never fit you'll never you'll never be a part of it because you have been marked you've been marked since your mother's womb you've been marked by the touch of god you might as well go ahead and surrender and say not my will but thine be done and make me what you want me to be you're never going to fit in you're never going to fit in that world Because the thumbprint of a holy heritage is upon you, Moses. And when you grow up, you're going to be a deliverer to the people. And when Moses grew up, or came to years, the King James Version said he refused to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Don't call me her son. My mother's a holy woman. My mother prayed destiny into my life. My mother prayed anointing. My mother prayed my fever away. My mother prayed my disease away. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever with my mouth. Will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations? Brother Porter, would you bring those babies? Bring both of them. They came very early. They were fighting for their little lives. But the church prayed. We have one of them. One will do as the other one. Where's the other one? Here they come. We've got time. I remember walking into the hospital room and seeing Mother as we begin to pray, Lord, not our will, but thine be done. 
weighed in that balance. It could have went up any way, either way. These babies do not resemble prematurity to me. Elizabeth, come here just a moment. Lord, you're faithful. We've we've not really shouted yet over these babies. You know, why didn't you shout, Pastor, when the Lord confirmed early in the morning that the babies would not die? Because that's just the way we are. We don't shout before because we just don't know that something might not happen. But the fearful and the unbelieving, there's no place in God's economy. God, you've been too good, but look at these miracles. You would never have dreamed... That a man of business and stature would have been fighting in a psychiatric ward for his mind. Nobody would have ever dreamed, but God is faithful. God is powerful. God is holy. Nobody would have ever dreamed. If we put all of your past up on the screen, nobody could have ever dreamed that you would have the command that you do. Our uncle told us at a family reunion, he said, Nathan and Paul will be the first young men in our family to ever go into the penitentiary. Thank you, uncle, for your confidence. But God had another plan. God had another plan. God had another plan. Folks, the faithful God is in this house. There's about to be healings here today. Signs and wonders are about to happen. If you would only give God a chance, you would receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Can I go ahead and step out by faith and say that over three will receive the Holy Ghost? If you obey God, there's going to be at least three prominent... Miracles? You can speak in tongues. I never have. But you will today. Because God is faithful. If you repent and you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I want everybody to stand and clap your hands and shout unto the faithful God. I want you to get out of the city of forgetfulness. I want somebody to start praising him for what he's done for you. Come on, somebody ought to praise him. Today's your day to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Today's your day to answer the call. Today's your day to get out of forgetfulness. I'm coming out of forgetfulness. Devil, you tried to cloud my mind. Devil, you tried to get me to forget. Devil, you tried to take my call away. You tried to take my joy away. You tried to take my hope away. You tried to take my faith away. But today, I'm not fearful. I'm not unbelieving. I believe everything I've heard. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm coming to get a miracle. I'm coming to get a ministry. I'm coming to get my calling. If you're thankful, we're not trying to work it up, not trying to hype it up, but we will turn it loose and let it go. If the Lord has performed a miracle in the last 30 days and you remember it in just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to return to give Him the praise. 
that is due his name. If God has worked a miracle in this year already in your life, I'm going to give you an opportunity to return. But before I do, I take dominion and I take authority over every lying spirit. I take authority over every demonic presence, every fearful and unbelieving word that has come against your people, every tormenting thought, every spirit of can't. You took our ladies to conference so they could come back with a sanctified yes in their spirit, not a no. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll walk in anointing. Yes, I'll be whatever you want me to be. Yes, I want the Holy Ghost. Yes, I'll be baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, I want a ministry that God could put on me and use me. In just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to lift your voice of appreciation to the mighty God. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not declaring what's going to happen. But I have a funny feeling that we're not going to get all the way to the front because the power of the Holy Ghost is about to hit you right where you're at. I want you to start thanking Him on the count of three. I want everything to get out of the land of forgetfulness. Jog your memory and every devil that's told you no and all the insecurities and poor self-image that said you can't say, get behind me, Satan. I'll do what the Lord says. I will agree with God's holy word. I will do what He says. One, two, I want there to be a shout from this place. Some of you are weeping right now. Some of you are already talking in tongues. I want you to lift your hands. One, two, three. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Come on, that's it. Let it roar. Lord, I praise You right now. If You're here,